Check, check, check. Hey, hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Anthony. I'm one of the pastors here at Seattle Revival Center. Welcome. Welcome. Why don't we stand up to our feet? Yeah, yeah. Come on. So good. So I want to, um, I got uh, one, two, three. Then I saw in Ephesians 1, 2, 3, it says 1, 23. Come on. It says, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. And so that's what we've come here tonight as his body, with Christ as our head, that he fills us with himself. So tonight... We're just inviting you, Father, to fill us with yourself. Fill us with yourself, Lord. We thank you for, for every, uh, everything that, that needs to be filled, every void, every crack, every credit, crevice this night, Lord, that, that, that needs to be filled, God, that it's leaking out to our families, that it's leaking out to our neighborhoods, that it's leaking out to our schools and our workplaces. Come on, church. Jesus. That where we are, that it ekes out. Yeah. And he's just overtaking it, overtaking it, overtaking it. So, Father, we just welcome you. We welcome you. We yield to you. We yield it all to you, Lord. And we say, use this body. Use this body for your fullness for your fullness to inhabit this earth. Come on, come on, come on, come on, somebody. <laughs> come on, somebody. Tap your neighbor, give him a drink. Come on. Fill him with that presence of Jesus. Come on. Online, online, just lift your hands, lift your hands. And just say, come fill me, Lord. Come fill me, Lord. Come fill me, Lord. Just say, one, two, three. One, two, three. You can come fill me. Hey, Ephesians, one, two, three. We are the body. He is the head. Come on. Yep, 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 yep. So, Father, fill us up with you. Jesus, fill us up with you. Jesus, fill us up. Fill us up to overflowing. Ooze in the cracks and crevices and seal it off, Lord. Seal it off. In Jesus' name. Everybody shout it. Amen. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh! Hallelujah. I'd like to invite you to the spacious and luxurious altar area to move around, to dance, to intercede, to bless, to praise. Call it, we're calling the Shekinah, 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 whatever you want to call it. Come on, we're up to your glory tonight. <laughs> the shock and awe. Come on, we're going to ask for nations again. I love that. I, lo I love the flags here. So we're going to ask for our inheritance. We're going to worship our way into our inheritance tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord. And there's a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord. prodigals to come home. Oh, yes, Lord. Yeah. 
one God His name is Jesus One with the Father One with the Spirit So lift your heads up Open the ancient doors of Israel right now the apple of your eye we pray for the peace of Jerusalem oh hallelujah Lord send your favor on that land send that favor on that land Lord come on begin to intercede in, in tongues everybody everybody praying in tongues come on
us, Lord. <laughs> Whoa. See, we're going to intercede. We're going to pray. We're going to worship from high places.
Say, Lord, take me high.
love you, Lord. We love your presence. He's walking in our midst. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. He is wearing a golden sash round his waist. And I know that he is walking here in this place. And from before him flows a river of fire let it flow Lord in this place wow. that's our desire come on and he is wearing a golden sash round his way And I know that he is walking here in this place. Oh, now from before him, yeah. There flows a river of fire. Come on. <laughs> Let it flow up in this place. That's our desire. All oh, ancient of days, you are the ancient of days. We will worship as you are in this holy place.
Are you ready for a suddenly, suddenly, suddenly? Are you ready for a suddenly, suddenly, suddenly? Ah, suddenly there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Suddenly, awesome tongues of fire appeared on every man. And suddenly, it's happening, it's happening here again, yeah. Let the wind blow, 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 let the fire 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 blow.
lift your voice and worship. Come on, you're now singing with the angels in the house. <laughs> Crowns before the king, twenty-four seven. And day and night, night and day, worship at your throne. Day and night, night and day, worship. 
worship at your throne. And day and night, night and day, I worship at your throne. Sing that. And day and night, night and day, I worship at your throne.
the earth is filled with praise, lifting up your holy name 24 7. Creation groans for the sons who will worship at your throne 24 7. Respond to the Lord by singing this. Day and night, night and day, we'll worship at your throne. Day and night, night and day, we'll worship at your throne. Day and night, night and day, we'll worship at your throne. Mm -hmm. Day and night, night and day, we'll worship at your throne. Come on, lift up your voice and worship tonight. Oh, something's shifting in the atmosphere. You've made a connection tonight. You've made a divine connection. There's a synergy between heaven and earth right now in this place. Oh. alignment you come into agreement you come into alignment with heaven you come into agreement with heaven
throne oh, A whole lot of movement at the throne A whole lot of movement at the throne
sing that the angels gather. The angels gather around the throne. And around your throne they bring praises to the living one. To the awesome one they sing. Lift your voice tonight. Let's sing it
singen.
let it rain. Come on, can somebody shout to open the heavens tonight? Can somebody shout a breakthrough? Shout, let it rain, God. Let it rain in this place, Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. Shabbat.
room tonight the gates here tonight do you know that you're a gate tonight an access point to heaven yeah 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 whoa just go and stand up to your feet I know you've been on your feet put your hand on your belly and just declare to those rivers to come up right now just say river of living water come up and out come up and out of these gates come up and out of these gates come out of these gates all the rivers of living water come up <laughs> just get refreshed right now in the Lord come on get refreshed Whoa! Just declare there's a river of life. There's a river of life. There's a river of life. And it's flowing out of me. It's flowing out of me. It's flowing out of me. All right, look at the person next to you. You're going to pull up. You're going to pull up out of your well rivers and you're going to release the rivers of life over, over the person standing next to you. Are you ready? One, two, Three rivers, 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 whoa, whoa, rivers, 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 woo, woo. Okay, 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 okay. Look at the other person next to you. Turn around. Look at the other person next to you. Re take your hands. Reach down deep into that well. Reach down deep into that well. Are you ready? One, two, three. Rivers! Rivers! For everyone online, rivers! 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 Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> look, look around the room. Look around the room. Look around the room. And this is our this is our seeker sensitive night tonight. Actually, we we always do seeker sensitive. Friday. Look around the room and find someone that look and they, and it looks like they need some some of that living rivers. Find. <laughs> Look around the room. This is the last time. And then you're going to run up to them. And you're going to release the rivers of living water. You ready? Look around. One. Hurry. Move. 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 All through the room. All through the room. Two. 
three, reverse, reverse. Reverse, reverse for the cameraman. Whoa. <laughs> All right, oh, I, I, I said one last time, but we got to bless Steve Swanson tonight. Reach down deep, reach down deep, reach down deep. Ready? One, two, three, rhythm! The kingdom of God is not McDonald's, but righteousness, peace, and some joy, 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 joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Someone join me now. Come on now. Release that new sound tonight. Oh! If you want some joy, you must shout for it. If you want some joy, come on, shout for it. If you want some joy, come on, shout for it. The joy of the Lord is mine. Everyone, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. way more serious about joy, amen? Oh! Have you heard about this? There's, this? there's been this move of God in this place called Reading, and there's this pastor named Bill Johnson. Have you guys heard of him? Yeah? He makes this statement. He says, God is good, and in a... God is good, and he's in a... God is good, and he's in a good mood. Isn't that good news? You know, the, the, the gospel. Gospel, it means good news. It means good news. And I, I love the story of the, the, uh, the, the Christmas story when the shepherds are, they be out chilling and stuff. And all of a sudden, in the, in the middle of the night, the night turns to day as the angel of the Lord appears to them and says, fear not, for I have good news. And how many of you know that the world needs to hear this message? Fear not, we got good news of great joy. Fear not. Fear not Seattle. Fear, fear not West Coast. Fear not Guam. Come on, because we got good news of great joy. Joy, 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 joy. Fear not. Fear not. Come on. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He came. He lived. He died, He resurrected, ascended, and has been glorified. He released the Holy Spirit on the earth for such a time as this. That we would disciple nations. That we would disciple nations. That we would disciple nations. 
How many of you know that we need to be awakened? We need to be awakened to the reality that we have been called and filled for such a time as this to make disciples of nations. Amen? All right. Oh, man. Haven't you guys enjoyed Steve Swanson this week? Oh, man. So, it's been so good. It's been just an awesome week. Miranda Nelson's in the house tonight. All the way from San Diego. And it's that time of the night when we're going to receive an offering. And, and to help us with that, I want you to, to help me welcome Charlie Sham. Come on. All right, come on now. You want some of that revelation? Yeah. Take your hand and put it on your neighbor right now. This is going to be the drunkest offering. Of the entire weekend. Yeah. Can I get a little organ, Steve? Just a little bit of organ. An organ. Just a little organ. How many are good and drunk right now? Just wave at me. Okay, what about this side? Are you good and drunk? All right now. You can make out your checks to SRC. SRC. Hallelujah. SRC. I was looking at this scripture today in John chapter 1, verse 16. It says, out of his fullness... We have all received, say received, grace in place of grace already given. You know that you've been given grace and you've been, who? you've received the fullness and out of the fullness, you've been given the ability to step into supernatural grace. Do you know that there's grace in giving? Look at your neighbor and say, there's grace tonight. I remember when I first started learning about giving, it was a stretch for me to even like give 20 bucks. I was like, I don't know nothing about this, but preacher said give something. So I take out my wallet and I look through my wallet and I say, okay, not the hundred, not the 50. Cause it is all, you know, it is all about the Benjamins, but we can't do that tonight. So. I would just, I would grab the 20 and just say, all right. But that's, there, say grace. grace. There's a grace that I received, and I would always feel it in my spirit. And then God began to deal with me, and he started stretching me. And he would say, you know, there's grace to give more, because you've already received the fullness. Oh, come on, somebody. You've already received the fullness, so there's grace to give. And then it doesn't become a stretch to start to give the 50 because you're like, I got grace because I've already received the fullness. The Bible says that we've already received this treasure in earthen vessels. And so we're just giving out of the rich treasury tonight of the super abundance of what God has already given. There is no lack. There is no need. It's supplied through the riches in glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Proverbs 21 verse 26 says the righteous gives and does not hold back. You know there's something about giving that you just, when you're righteous and you got the new creation reality living on the inside of you, it's just like everything within you just says, I want to give and I want to give more and I want to give and I want to give and I want to give because you realize that there's a fullness that's living on the inside of you and it's never going to run out. Come on, somebody. It's never going to run dry. you got a well on the inside of you of financial blessing that is never going to run dry. The enemy tries to tell you, well, you're running out. You better hold on to that 
50. You better hold on to that hundred. You better store away that thousand. You better, you better, you're never gonna, you're never gonna give the thousands because you're, you're saying, oh, you better store that for a day. But the Lord says, no, no, no. Don't you understand? I've given that to you so that I can increase you. And when you release it, I'm gonna, oh my goodness, I'm gonna release upon you even more of the fullness and the revelation of a grace that you're never gonna run dry, but there's always gonna be enough to supply every need according to the riches and glory and every time that you reach in and you think oh, all I got is just this little bit left suddenly God just begins to multiply shout multiply multiplication of the fullness so tonight we're going to give out of the abundance of our heart the Bible says give out of the fullness give out of the abundance we've been seeing some incredible just financial miracles. I, I was in India, and in the meeting, a guy checked his bank account. We didn't even take the offering. We just said, check your bank account. We're going to release what I call glory economic miracles. And he went and checked his bank account, had $25,000 in there. Just manifest it. Say manifest. Because there's no lack. Just manifest it. So if you're ready to give tonight, I want you to hold up your offering. What I love about this church is like even during the preaching, people are running up and just giving. They can't help it. You just say, you just you just hear something, you're just like, I gotta go, I gotta give. Like last night Mahesh was preaching, and it was just people started running up. I was running up, I was giving. I said, I'll have a little bit of that, Jesus. Come on now. Just wave your offering tonight. Father, I thank you that we received the fullness. We've received this fullness and out of this fullness, this abundant treasury, tonight we're going to sow. And Father, I thank you that every person underneath the sound of my voice, that there is no lack. Poverty is destroyed. The mindset that we don't have enough is just being broken right now in this place. And Father, I ask you to release supernatural, glory economic miracles. Release money miracles tonight. That even as they go back to their seat, they would find more money in their purses and their wallets. Lord, we're not just praying a prayer, but we're decreeing in the Spirit supernatural finances, miracle money. Lord, let the bank accounts run over tonight. Let there be testimonies from this weekend of just financial prosperity and blessing. We give you praise and glory for it now in Jesus' name. You can come and give. Steve, you got something like just some good offering music, something to make us happy. Yeah. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Oh, He's filled with compassion and His mercy is everlasting. God is good. God is good all the time. Come on, somebody. God is good. Yeah, He's so good all the time. tempted to whine just remember it's good all the time and it ain't a crime to worship the Lord in the new world
It's about to go down all up in here. Uh-huh. Uh. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Everyone MC Anthony in the house. Come on now. Uh. Oh. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on, stand up to your feet, everybody, please. Ah. Uh. Uh. Feeling fine, you know who I'm. I don't eat swine, just kidding. Wait, I don't actually. Lord, bring the sword more than we can afford. I have to jump on board that ship and then I adore ah. you. With, I got hit more with the waves and then I went down deeper, deeper and I heard that sound. I'm a sleeper in your grace. I see your face and it's rising. Look at your neighbor and said, oh, he's so surprising. Whoa. He's rising. He's higher. I praise him because he's my sire, and uh, I have this new attire, it's his fire. Oh! So, more, come on, more, come on. Give me a, give me a chorus. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, clap your hands. <laughs> well, it ain't no crime to get into that apple wine. Hey. Have a good time and drink of that peace. It's shalom. Get into that glory dome. We're pressing in, going up to higher places. We're a, a new race, a people. Yep. We're aliens just passing through. But hey, we got a job to do. The Lord has put us here for such a time as this. Yo, put up your fist, because we're in the army of God. We're the sons of Abraham. A mighty generation, liberation is our mission. Look out. Cause we goin' fishing, cause it's awakening. Hey! In harvest, well it's awakening. Oh, in uh, harvest, hey. it's awakening. And in harvest, harvest, it's awakening. In harvest, ha -ha 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 -ha. it's awakening. He's taking me higher because I see him. He gave me this whole plate, and so I'm old. I'm eating, I'm feasting, I'm feasting, I'm rising higher. Cause he's giving me this fire that I see. It's breaking through. We bringing you to a place that where we never saw it. Pass the bread and maybe some oil, maybe more oil, maybe more oil, maybe more oil, maybe more oil. He paid the great cost, the, the great sacrifice. He came and paid yep. the ultimate price That's right. for such a people to have relationship, to know their God and not be separated. Where the sons of God. The daughters of God, not Come afraid on. no more, cause we're coming up to new places, yeah. stepping into heavenly graces. Yep. Look around and look at all the shining faces. We're the glowing ones, the burning ones. We're coming up and now. Come out of your closet. No more hiding now. No more silence. No more hiding out. We're coming yeah. up. It's top. It's top. It's awakening. It's awakening. All this. It's awakening. In harvest, it's awakening. In harvest, it's awakening. And yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I used to be asleep, but I'm awake and I'm higher. Word. Oh, I just feel it. It's all of his fire. Ah. Elijah revolution in the building, double portion. Whoa. Speaking on these things, understanding it's his portion. Ooh. Because we're just coursing. He's never, ever forcing never his love because he brings you up higher than Whoa. where you've been. I never thought I would forget a word, but he brought me out, out the herd so that I could be on his shoulders. He folded me, helping me close. I see him closer than I could ever say. In him I boast, so I'm coast to coast. Maybe might just have to blow so that I can say it's just for him that I have to toast. Hey, it's awakening to Jesus. In harvest, well, it's awakening. In harvest, well, it's awakening. In harvest. Uh -oh. It's awakening! Whoa, 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 whoa. Awakening. Whoa. 
piece. Ah, uh, Anthony, he be holding back on me. Look at that guy. Oh, man. Each, it's, it's time for a revival historical moment here where I, where I begin to bust out some history revival. But each, each revival brings an awakening or a, a revelatory understanding of something new. And you see like the Toronto blessing brought out the Father's heart of God and, and the, the latter rain brought out the like five-fold ministry. And um, what God's doing in San Diego right now, in Seattle, there is this, this new thing emerging and it's spontaneous gangster rap in the church <laughs> from white guys. But we're about to actually, some, some actual legitimate rappers are about to show up and they're going to make us, blo I mean, Anthony is actually a legitimate poet. Um, but I, I tell you, that's, that's one thing you did not see um, during the Toronto Blessing was um, a lot of gangster rap. So I, I'm, really, I'm really excited about um, this glorified gangster rap that's, that's starting to, to hit the church. So that was your revival history moment. Da -da -da -da. All right. Okay, if you want, if you want all the audio, how, how many of you enjoyed uh, 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 Mahesh Shabda, Jeremy Nelson, Andre Ashby? Oh my goodness. And then this morning, how many of you were here this morning? Oh my goodness. It was, uh, Steve Swanson went into this thing on the image of God. He just began prophesying and singing about the image of God. And then, uh, and then Charlie uh, got up and preached on the image of God when, when Jesus appears. And I'm telling you, there was just like this, this incredible uh, 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 calibrating that began to take place, uh, alignment of hearts and just conviction. And it was, it was just a beautiful, beautiful morning in the glory of God. So um, if you would like all the audio, um, it's all free. And if you would like all the video, it's all free. It's yours. And uh, the, the easiest way to access it, uh, to aggregate it, is on the Seattle Revival Center app. Okay? Okay? And what you do is you just go to the, the, the app store. If you don't know what an app is, um, uh, find someone in the room that looks like they might know. Um, <laughs> uh, get the Sarah Valser app. Sc scroll all the way down to where it says bonus features. Click on bonus features and you'll see um, uh, the content uh, of, of uh, 14 sessions. Okay? Um, and then you can also go to um, watch live and watch all the archive sessions. Isn't that awesome? Don't you just love technology? It's just, it's just incredible. All right, so, so go and do that. That would be great. Um, also, we're really excited about our School of Supernatural Ministry. Uh, yeah, last year was off the, was off the chain, um, and we're really excited about the, the students that we have enrolled this year. Um, uh, uh, our enrollment ends August 17th, okay? So that's uh, coming right up. And so in order to enroll, we personally interview every student because we want to make sure that the school is a good fit for them. So you'll want to get that scheduled uh, this next week. So to do that, if you look at the back there where it says you are loved in all those different languages, there's a kiosk there. Put in your information. You'll be contacted uh, to set up an interview. Um, so this is for people that, are, uh, that don't want to just hear about this stuff. They want opportunity um, and authority released to them to begin doing this stuff. So if you want to start going on some trips, being part of ministry teams, hitting the streets, um, then this is a great opportunity uh, for you. So you'll want to you'll want to check that out. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> it's a good time to be alive. The, the Lord really is um, waking us up, and He's really shaking things up, and He's 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 bringing us a, 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 the body of Christ a revelation that we are indeed oracles of hope. And there's such a desire for hope right now in the nations and in the world. And what's so cool is that the people of God are really coming up into this understanding of the people of God. And things are shaking and baking right now. Um, and it's been so much fun to run with Jeremy and Miranda. Um, now, they were uh, stewarding, you know, the, um, the San Diego thing um, until all of a sudden the Lord dropped in their heart to get to London. So three days notice, Jeremy was on a plane to London. Things broke out there, and they're going in London. And so they're in week number seven or eight 
uh, in London. So we got the San Diego, uh, it's the Fire and Glory Outpouring. Now we have the London Awakening. Um, and, uh, and then they've been going in Ottawa, Canada now, except in Ottawa, they're actually going every single night. They're seeing hundreds of, de uh, of decisions for Christ in the streets. So it's really taken to the streets. And, um, and so, that, that's, so that's really, really cool. Um, stuff's breaking out really, really all, all over the place uh, right now. And so uh, I, I love what Joshua Mills said. If you want to be a part of what God is doing, just say yes. And then swan dive right into the middle of it. Okay, I, I added the other part. But say yes and then swan dive. Um, if you don't know what that is, YouTube it. Right into, right into the into the, the middle of it. We were just in San Diego with Jeremy and Miranda. Uh, I just love watching um, the glory of God uh, on Miranda. Uh, she has this incredible prophetic intercessory gift. Each night I watched as she would just go into this zone. One night she gave up, got up and just gave a spontaneous altar call. All kinds of uh, young people ran to the altar, got saved, and then they started getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, it was totally unscripted. Miranda's just up there calling people to the cross, calling people to Jesus, calling people to repentance. Um, Miranda is a no-nonsense girl. Um, she's all about the presence of God, the glorious of uh, the glorifying God through a life of integrity and holiness. Uh, huge call um, uh, into the entertainment industry, into modeling and fashion and design. Um, and even in that sphere, uh, there is no compromise in her. So uh, you can't really put Miranda in a box. If you try, she'd be all busting out of that box, if, 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 you, if you know what I'm saying. And so, Miranda, thanks for coming. Thanks for being a part of this week. Such an honor to have you here. And would you join me tonight in honoring and welcoming Miranda Nelson. Come on. Thank you, guys. It's good to be here. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. He's worthy. He's so good. He's so... Isn't he wonderful? <laughs> I love it. Um... We're going to have a good time tonight. It's, it's, we're already having a good time, right? I love that worship. It's so good to be back with Darren. So great with Steve. Man, that was some awesome kick in worship. I love it. Um, I love what Darren said, unscripted altar call. Listen, I don't, I, I don't script anything because, <laughs> you know, I, I throw out messages all the time. I, I had a new message the other night um, at the fire and glory outpouring on, uh, I think that was Wednesday night and I brand new download fresh. I was all excited to preach it, get up there. The Holy ghost whacks me. And, uh, we, <laughs> we just had a good drunken time. I ended up uh, preaching a word, but it was a completely different fresh word. So, you know, I don't believe in the scripting of, uh, <laughs> you know, I believe in the Holy ghost. Amen. <laughs> he can do, I do my best to prepare for stuff, but man, he, he has permission to throw it out of the water, out in the water, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and just do whatever he wants to do. Amen. But I love this worship. Just set the tone for tonight. I'm excited. Before I get going, before we get going tonight, um, just uh, my interns, well, my female interns are here tonight. Come on. I know they've been, they beat me here. So they've been with you. You guys had the guys earlier this week with Jeremy and uh, we got four of our interns and then Angie who oversees them. who's amazing. And uh yeah, I know that they've already been blessing you guys. Um, I just want to give Kareen, she, she te texted me a vision she had, and it goes right along with what was going on in the worship and what I'm going to preach on tonight. So can you just quickly, quickly, quickly come share that vision that she had? Come on. All right, Seattle. Um, I saw an angel, huge angel. I don't know how to say it. It was huge, and I saw a sore with a fire, and he literally just he jumped in this place, and he was like, bang, I'm like, just put the fire in here. And like, really, I was like, Lord, what is that, God? What is that? And, and there's a new fire, and that consuming fire is going to burn so many things in Seattle, and I, it's gonna be, Seattle is not going to be the same anymore. And, and, and the fire... There's people, like, the, I saw people's, like, feet getting on fire, and these people is going to take that fire to some nations that's been in their heart. I saw multiple people, like, they had the fire on their feet. So, God, we thank you for the fire, God. We thank you for releasing that new fire, God. We thank you, Lord, for purifying, for purifying Seattle. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Karine. 
She's amazing. All of our girls are awesome, and um, we'll get them praying for people at the end. But I wanted her to share that because uh, God's going to mark you guys tonight. I'm telling you, the fire is already falling, but I'm telling you, God is going to mark you guys tonight with a fresh torch, with a fresh flame tonight. I'm telling you, God's going to shift some things tonight, whether it be in your life or even in the atmosphere. I was seeing things uh, overhead that God's going to do, uh, even in the region. So I'm, woo, I'm excited. So just, I'm just going to pray really quick. God, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, God, I thank you for your presence in this place, God. I thank you for your glory in this place. I thank you for your joy. I thank you for your sweet spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you dwell, you abide here. And God, we give you permission tonight, God, to move in this place, God, to move in our midst, Lord, like never before, God. Lord, to spark fires, Lord, in our lives, in our heart, in our being, God, Lord, that will cause us to never be the same, Lord. So, God, we give you permission to mess us up tonight, God. We give you permission, Lord, God, to light fires, to light torches, God, in Jesus' mighty name to do miracles. Some of you are even going to get miracles. Man, I wasn't going to do this till the end, but some of you are going to get miracles even in your seats right now. Come on, just lift your hands to the Lord. Even if you need a miracle right now, oh, just receive it where you are. Oh, receive it where you are. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, by the end of this meeting, there's going to be a whole bunch of you healed. Come on. Lord, release that miracle working power, even right now, God, that fire that consumes, God, everything that's not of you. I'm sorry if I'm messing with the cameras, but this is, this is, this is revival. <laughs> so God, <laughs> release that revival fire right now. I'm telling you, God's marking you. Oh, God's marking you. There's a prophetic evangelistic anointing on you. And I'm telling you, there's an advancement that God's doing. There's an advancement and there's an acceleration of what he's releasing on you. And there's, there's eagle eyes that God's giving you. Woo! Eagle eyes. Eyes to see the bigger picture. Eyes to see prophetically. Discerning of spirits. I'm telling you, you're about, you've been in like the school of the spirit, and I'm telling you, God, you're, God's about to advance you. <laughs> oh, accelerate that anointing on you. Oh, for harvest. So, Father, I thank you, God, for that prophetic the prophetic anointing on her, God. Those eagle eyes that are God, those eagle eyes, Lord God. Lord, mixed with the evangelistic anointing, Father. God, we just release that on her, Lord. We release that, God, I thank you. You've called her, God. You've called her even to the counterculture. Even to the counterculture, God, there, those that most people don't go to, God, to the counterculture, God, Lord, to the, to the out there kind of people, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. She has a heart. She has a passion for them, God, for the artsy kind of creative kind of wild ones, Lord. I thank you, God, that she's got a radical love and a radical boldness on her and a radical fire, God, Lord, that will reach the down and outs, that will reach, God, the artsy kind of crazies, Lord. So, God, Lord, release that glory, God. I thank you for keys in her hand, God, to unlock their hearts, God, and see them, see them completely transformed, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> God bless you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. My hair's all over the place now, but it's okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> Lord, I'm telling you, God's healing arthritis over here right now. If you have arthritis, just stand to your feet. I'm telling you, God's healing arthritis right now. Yeah, God, we just speak to that arthritic pain right now. 
in the joints, God, that someone's right hip being healed right now. If that's you, just begin to move it around. Someone in the wrist and the elbow, God's removing that pain right now in Jesus' name. We just speak to that arthritic pain. We just command it to go. Just begin to move your bodies right now. Someone also, your tailbone uh, is being healed. Whoever need that miracle, just, uh, yeah, that's you. Just, I don't know, check it out. See how you're feeling. You too. We just speak to that right now in Jesus' name. We just command that pain to go. We just command that bone to be restored in Jesus' name. Just begin to move your bodies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You got to test it out in order to see. <laughs> Sometimes people just look, they're like, huh? Oh, you know, but you got to actually test it out. <laughs> the man with the withered hand had to stretch forth his hand and it was loose. Amen. Sometimes you just got to do something in order to see the release. So check it out, you guys. You sat back down. Check it out. Did you feel a release? Who felt the release? Who felt the. If you're not feeling the release, you got to check it out. <laughs> Come on, check, check it out. Who, who had the pain that was standing? Did you have the pain? How are you feeling? Much better. But still a little bit? Well, we thank you, Lord, for the much better. And we just come in. Oh, all of that pain just goes in Jesus' name. All of it right now. Loose in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. There's someone over here that God's doing. I don't know if it's you or if it's someone else over here that God's doing something with the heart and the arteries. Does that make sense to someone? Over there. Is there someone right over here? Well, we'll pray for you. Stand up. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. I just suddenly saw the arteries or heard the arteries. So, God, I just thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, God, for healing right now in Jesus' name. God, we just thank you. Someone also, God's healing. Sorry that I'm ignoring you guys, but (laughs) the lungs, the lungs, someone's healing. God's healing someone over here with the lungs, lung condition, asthmatic attacks. We just speak to that as you too. So God, we just thank you for the heart and the asthma being healed, the heart and the lungs being healed right now in Jesus name. You're going to begin to feel a warmth, even go down your chest, even down your lungs. Lord, we just release that right now in Jesus name. Whew. Just release that right now. God, over both of these brothers, Lord, we just release, God, that healing virtue right now. How's your shoulder doing? Much better? How long did you have that problem? Uh, five, five years. Five, five years? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How are you guys feeling over there? You can't tell. But we just, yeah, we just declare that that's healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, God's going to heal a lot of people, even even at the end. You guys got your shoulder, your shoulders up, your hands up. Just in the glory, are you getting healed? (laughs) What's going on? Huh? You don't have to talk, but I just want to know what's going on. You just praising the Lord, or you getting the healing? Yeah. What's going on? It's okay. God loves you. We're not judging you. Cancer? Yeah, we can pray for you. Yeah, do you feel, do you feel God's touching you? Oh, well, praise God. You had your hand raised because you get a blessing. So, Lord, we just thank you. We've seen so many people healed of cancer. So many people healed of stage 4 cancer. Nonstop, we see so many people healed of stage four cancers and all sorts of cancers, and they go back to the doctor and they can't find them anymore. In fact, that's how the Ottawa revival broke out, was a woman with stage four cancer got totally healed one night. She came back with the doctor's reports the very next night, showing the before and the after from the very night before. And she was totally healed, and revival broke out, and now they've been going for a year. And so, God, we just thank you, Lord, for our dear sister, Lord, and we just speak to this cancer, and we just command every trace of cancer to just go right now in Jesus' name. We just command all cancer to just go right now in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for you more at the end. I feel like I need to preach because it's going to actually release more miracles uh, through the word. So, but Lord, we just thank you. Just receive your, receive your healing, even as, as we're releasing the word. God, we just release that healing miracle right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on, give the Lord. Just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving releases and activates more miracles. You realize that, right? Because you're rejoicing in God and you're rejoicing in who he is and what he's done. And it, it, it encourages him 
to do more. Isn't that awesome? So God, we just thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you. We invite you to do all the more tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, like I said, God's going to anoint you with a fresh fire in this place. And I saw the Lord doing, oh, I saw the Lord doing some awesome things. And uh, I'm telling you, God is restoring the altar of the Lord. He's restoring the altar of the Lord. The Lord spoke to me and he said, Miranda, it's 1 Kings 18. It's Elijah going before the prophets of Baal. He restores the altar of the Lord. And he said to the prophets of Baal, he said, whoever's God answers by fire, he's God. Listen, our God is a consuming fire, right? It says in Hebrews, our God is a consuming fire. And listen, you have this, you have the God of fire burning on the inside of you. And I'm telling you, he's bringing awakening through fire in order that you would be a sign and a wonder, in order that you would re- release fire everywhere you go, everywhere I've gone. When I've released the fire of God, when I've spoken on the fire of God, I'm telling you, mighty signs and wonders break out. Signs, wonders, miracles, and notable things that happen even out there. And I'm telling you that God, God is going to begin to shift some things. I'm telling you, I even saw earlier today, I was flying over here and had a vision before I fell asleep. <laughs> I had a vision on the airplane um, of an eagle. And then, uh, then below the eagle was the cloud. And I knew what I was coming into because I'm from British Columbia originally. So I knew that there had been, you know, fires and smoke. But when I had this vision, I saw the eagle, and I saw the cloud of glory that was smoke from the fire. And the Lord began to speak to me, and he said, Miranda, through the fire comes the eyesight. Through the fire comes the visionary realm. And you can see that in the word, because Moses went up into the cloud of glory that all the children of Israel saw it as a consuming fire. And then he began to encounter the Lord. He began to see. His eyes were opened. I'm telling you, this is what God's releasing. Even tonight, this is what God's releasing, is he wants to bring clarity of vision. He wants to open your eyes to see. He's unlocking some things in the spirit. And I'm telling you, God's going God's to gonna stop some things as well. And, uh, you know, we're going to release some decrees at the end. But I know that God's going to shift some things, even with uh, bringing light into dark places in this region. And so I'm excited to see what God does. <laughs> Oh, but he's gonna, he's gonna light a torch in you tonight, my friends. He is gonna light a torch. I saw uh, in, in worship, I had a vision as I was on my knees of, uh, of this, this flaming torch making like a figure eight. And I was reminded of when God visited Abram right? In Genesis 15, God visits Abraham and, well, Abram, but Abraham, you know, same person. (laughs) And it says, now when the sun was going down in Genesis 15, 12, that a deep sleep fell upon Abram and behold, terror and great darkness fell upon him. And God said to Abraham, and he goes on, I'm not going to read it because this is not my focus, but but he goes on to release the, the promise and the word, even of four generations over Abram and what's about to happen, how they're about, they're going to be, you know, they're going to go out from this place and then they're going to come back in the fourth generation. But then it says, it says that it came about when the sun had set, verse 17, that it was very dark and behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a flaming torch, which passed between these pieces. And on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. And he goes on to the covenant between his descendants. But I'm telling you, there's something about the flaming torch and covenant. And God is, God is restoring covenant. He's restoring uh, relationship and even uh, activating his promise. And it comes through the fire. I'm telling you, God wants to mark you so much with the torch of fire that it restores, it restores covenant in your life. And it also activates some things. I'm talking both relationship covenant with him intimacy with him as well as the promises of the Lord over your life. I'm telling you, God wants to activate. He wants to release the torch of the Lord, the fire of God over you that would not burn out. Listen, there's too many people that they get set on fire for a very short amount of time and then they go back to their worldly lifestyle and it was just 
literally like a conference kind of thing. An encounter that didn't change anything. Listen, God encounters change you. God encounters change you. Come on, the fire of God changes you and transforms you, but you've got to embrace the fire. You've got to embrace the fire. I had an encounter almost nine years ago now that sparked a, a journey for me on, on studying out the fire of God and really encountering the fire of God, even with signs and wonders always uh, manifesting around me and whenever I would pray. And in this encounter, I was in San Diego. This was before we moved to San Diego. And I was in San Diego, and I had an encounter. I was in worship. Uh, we were doing a conference that weekend, a Holy Spirit weekend or something. And uh, the Lord told me, I want you to lay on the floor, prostrate yourself before me, and I'm going to encounter you. And because I was just kind of sitting there in worship, I was fully engaged, but I was just sitting in my chair, and the Lord said, I want you to lay on your face, and I want you to, I'm going to encounter you. The moment that I, that I lay down on the floor on my face, uh, I, I felt this hot heat come in case around me. And I saw this wall of fire. And I began to see a whole bunch of things all at once. And I began to, I began to see, I, I felt the ground shake as I saw lightning in the spirit strike the ground and, uh, and uh, begin to sh shatter the earth and begin to shatter things that were not of God. And... And I felt this fire in case around me. And I saw like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this wall of fire. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Miranda, he said, he said, I will shake everything that can be shaken. And he said that everything that's in the midst of the fire of God is completely safe and secure. Everything that's outside the fire of God will be shaken and cannot stand. And... <laughs> And I, I was in this encounter for, a, you know, for a little while, but it was, it was a radical holiness encounter. I began shaking and weeping and crying out, manifesting holy, holy, holy. I could not stop saying holy, holy, holy. Uh, and the room didn't know what was going on. They kind of looked, you know, I found out later. They were like looking at me like, what's going on, you know? But I was in a holy encounter. But I got up out of that encounter. I began to prophesy. And as I did... As I did, people came to the altar and began like repenting and giving their hearts back to God. And there was just, there was this holy moment. But also, I didn't mention this in the encounter. The Lord told me, he said, Miranda, I'm weakening the bonds of witchcraft in this land. And amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, he's going to do it tonight. I'm telling you, he's going to do, he's going to begin to do something, shift things in the atmosphere in this place tonight. I'm telling you. And, uh, but, but this was almost nine years ago now. Well, I didn't realize that very weekend that I had this encounter and I prophesied this. There was just down the street in that very region of San Diego, a whole group of witches gathering, like a witch coven, gathering for a convention, literally just down the street. I had no clue, but here God reveals something because I says, I'm going to, I'm going to weaken some things in this region. And lo and behold, just, you know, several years later, boom, revival breaks out in that very region. The very church that I prophesied, it was the very church that we were in when the revival broke out, the fire and glory outpouring. Like seven years later, whatever it was. But that's the goodness of God, amen? But see, sometimes God, God will shake things up. And he will, he will uh, uh, bring forth even conviction and release the fire of God in order to bring things into alignment so that he can really bring awakening and so he can really bring harvest. Amen. And I'm telling you that God wants to make you a flaming torch that everywhere you go, you're lighting regions, you're lighting places, you're lighting shops, you're lighting families on fire. I'm telling you, my family is on fire now. I, I come from a Mennonite background, a conservative background. I was shy and timid and quiet, didn't want to speak out loud. And I'm telling you, I got, <laughs> I got rocked with the Holy Ghost. Here I am. <laughs> 17 years old, and I got filled with the Holy Ghost, and boldness comes on me. I get completely changed 100% changed over and filled with fire, filled with boldness. And I began having dreams in the night. I began having dreams about fire touching my family. My brother's going to be here from Canada tomorrow. I'm excited. <laughs> but, but I began having dreams about 
fire touching my family. I had a dream where, where my, my house that I grew up in lit on fire completely into flames. And I knew in my dream that it was a revival fire. And I have another dream where I was building a bonfire with one of my brothers around my cousins on wet soil. And in my dream, I knew, you know, you don't build fires on wet soil. But, but in my dream, I heard the Lord say, don't despise the day of small beginnings. And, and so I woke up out of that dream knowing that it may not come instantaneous, but to begin to pray. I began to intercede hardcore for my family. One by one, my youngest brother, who's going to be here tomorrow, he gets filled with the Holy Spirit. His, his then future wife ends up getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Then my parents, now my parents, my brother, my other brother, my sis, other sister-in-law, and even a couple of my cousins filled with the Holy Ghost on fire, preaching the gospel, seeing signs and wonders. Some of them come down to the out pouring regularly. <laughs> Amen. But listen, it started with a fire and it started with a promise. See, God wants to so mark you with a fire that would begin to, like with Abram, the, the covenant that came was not just for him. The fiery torch that came as a representation of the Lord moving in his midst brought forth covenant and also the promise of God touching his descendants. See, God wants to so mark you with fire that it would light your family on fire. That it would light your friends on fire. That it would call back a generation to God. Because listen, how many know our generation needs God? Our generation from young to old, we need God. And listen, it's going to start with you. Awakening unto harvest starts with being touched by the fire. How many of you remember Peter, right? Y'all know Peter. Peter goes from denying Jesus, right, at the cross. Oh, man, silly Peter. But then he has an encounter with the love of God, John 21. He has an encounter with relationship with Jesus. Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And boom, he gets a revelation of covenant and then gets filled with the Holy Spirit. Tongues of fire come that day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. You know the story, right? A uh, uh, sound like a mighty rushing wind comes through that place as they're in the upper room. And boom, tongues of fire resting on their head. Peter goes goes from being that one that denied Christ to now he stands up and starts preaching the gospel. 3,000 saved that day alone. He was changed in a moment because a fire touched him. Touched him. Changed in a moment. And he never went back. He never looked back to his old ways. He never looked back. He was changed from that day that he began to start changing cities and turning them upside down. See, God wants to so light you on fire that you never look back. I've never looked back. Listen, I, I got saved when I was a little girl, but, and I never, I never turned away. I just didn't know the Holy Spirit. But I never, I never walked away. But listen, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, man, I've never looked back to before those days. I've always run forward more and more into him. I'm hungrier now than I've ever been for God. Listen, if, you, if you're stagnant, that's on you. You need to get in the glory. You need to press into God because relationship is on you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. He's waiting for you. And listen, I'm telling you, God's called you to be a sign and a wonder on the earth. He's called you, Isaiah 8:18, to be signs and wonders. Right? To be signs and wonders. Not only to see signs and wonders, but to be the sign and wonder. That where you go, people, I'm telling you, I was on an airplane last year, and there was a celebrity, a musician on that airplane, and I gave him a prophetic word because the Lord told me to. I didn't know who he was, but the guy beside me told me. But I began writing this prophetic word because the Lord uh, told me what to do in the situation, that I wouldn't look like I was a, you know, fan club because I didn't want to be that. <laughs> but he, he put the guy on my heart, and I began to get these words of knowledge and prophetic word. I write it down, give it to him. He's shocked. He opens it up and gets blown away. It opens the door for me then to, public, to, to uh, verbally prophesy over him. He gets so rocked by it that he waits for me off the aircraft in San Francisco and, and ushers me over to give me a big hug, smile, and thank me because I changed his life. I get an email from him a few days later because I'd left my email just in case he wanted to follow up. Not expecting it, though. Get an email in big, bold letters. He said, I saw a bright white light. 
He said, I, he said, you're an angel. He said, he said, I've been, I've been moved to, to come back to prayer, to, to come back to God. But he saw a bright white light, you guys. I believe that was literal. I believe it was literal. He wrote it in his email. I saw a bright white light. Listen, God's called you to be a sign and wonder. That's the reason I'm telling you that testimony. Because God's called you to be a sign and wonder that you would begin to radiate the glory. Listen, if Moses came down off the mountain, Exodus 34, and shone so bright with the glory of God that he had to veil his face. And that was old covenant, right? Second Corinthians 3 says that was the old covenant. How much more now by the spirit of the Lord? That, that was the law and we have the spirit. How much more should we shine? Should we radiate the glory of God? Come on, how much more should we glow in the dark, right? Come on, you're called to glow in the dark. In the darkest places, that's why I'm in the fashion industry. It's not because I chose it. God chose me to be in it, to be a light. And I, and I take it, I, I just that. I go into it not for the job. I go into it to be a light, to be a witness. And I see radical miracles, muscular dystrophy, uh, you know, um, kidney disease, all sorts of things healed, as well as salvations, dream interpretation. I see girls weeping, uh, guys weeping, like just people touched by the glory of God, but I won't compromise. The book of Daniel, after I had that encounter that I told you about nine years ago, almost now, in San Diego, when I had that encounter, the Lord said, because it was the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he said, Miranda, begin to study Daniel and the book of Daniel. And so I go to that story, Daniel chapter 3, you all know it. Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he creates this, this idol, commands everybody to bow down and worship it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refuse, right? They refused peer pressure. They refused the idolatry of their day. They knew the consequences. They knew the price they were going to have to pay, that they could potentially be thrown in a fiery furnace, right? But how many know what happens? Daniel chapter 3, the king has them come before him, and he gives them another chance. He says, listen, boys, if you, if you want, you know, go and I'll give you another chance. You go worship this idol. And they said, no, 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 we don't care. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. They said, listen, we want you to know that our God is able to deliver us from that fiery furnace. And even if he chose not to, we want you to know, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, that our God is the only one worth, wor worth, worth worship, <laughs> right? And as a result, Nebuchadnezzar, raging mad, throws them in fire seven times hotter. You remember what happens? Those that threw them in outside the fire, burnt to the ground, outside the fire. Those that were thrown in, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, bound up, thrown in, inside the fire. They had a fire around them that was far greater than the external situation. And there was a fire inside them that caused those shackles to be broken. And King Nebuchadnezzar says, hey, didn't I just throw three men in, shackled, bound up? And, and his, his guys say, well, yeah, yeah, you did. And he says, look, I see four men loosed, walking in the midst of the fire, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Pulls them out. And boom, it becomes a witness, powerful witness that causes King Nebuchadnezzar to say, listen, don't let anybody talk bad about this God because there ain't no God as great as this God. <laughs> powerful witness to the king of the darkest kingdom at the time. That's a powerful witness. And the Lord began to speak to me. And just like he told me in the encounter that I had personally, and he said, everything in the midst of the fire of God is completely safe. Everything outside the fire of God is, cannot stand. Zechariah 2.5 says, I'll be a wall of fire around her, the glory in her midst. Talking about the people of God. I'll be a wall of fire around her, the glory in her midst. Listen, God wants to be a wall of fire around you, the glory in your midst, but you got to embrace the fire. A lot of people are scared of the fire because they like their comfort. They like their comfort zone, and they think that, you know, waiting in their sin is, and their compromise is the easy way out. Listen, maybe it seems easy for you, but it's a lot easier to, you know, <laughs> just like it talks about in Acts, to not go against the goats, right? 
Listen, God, God's looking for you. He wants to release such a grace on you. There's a grace that comes when you yield and you say yes to Holy Spirit. And there's a grace that comes. Oh, and there's a glory that comes. Grace and glory, right? He wants to anoint you, crown you with grace and glory. And there's a grace and a glory that comes when you embrace the fire of God. See, the fire of God, it's not, it's not something bad and scary. God is a consuming fire, and it, ca- it should cause us to have the fear of God. But how many know that the fire of God is, is, is love to us? It's love to us because he has fire in his eyes, and he's piercing into your soul, into your heart with fiery love, burning hot, like Song of Solomon talks about, right? A fiery love inside of him for you. But he's a consuming fire at the same time. Psalm 97.3 says, A fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries round about. And his lightnings lit up the world. But listen, a fire goes before him, burns up his adversaries round about. If a fire goes before him and he's dwelling in you and with you, that means there's a fire, again, encased around you. And a fire goes before you and burns up God's adversaries round about you. That means that no weapon formed against you can prosper. That means that no, no form of darkness can touch you or crush you. When you understand what you've got, when you understand the fire, when you embrace the fire, I had a dream. Back when I, was, when I had that encounter, the Lord, like I said, began to really, really instill it in, you know, put it in me. <laughs> And I, had, I was having encounter after encounter in, in my, in my uh, condo in Canada at the time before we moved to San Diego. I, I would smell smoke all the time. There was, we'd go outside. Jeremy would smell it too. We'd go outside, no fire trucks, no fire. Just in our condo, there'd be smoke. In my, in my literal closet, <laughs> there would be smoke. Like, we could not get away. We, I'd be preaching on the fire in places, and then the whole room would smell smoke. I, I have, um, I don't know if I still have it, but I had a DVD on the fire of God and people would tell me they'd watch the DVD and smoke would fill their living room. It's a sign, you guys, that God wants to. He wants to so saturate you and burn, cause, uh, cause you to have that, that burning torch, that fiery coal. See, when you embrace the fire, you get the call of God and you get the grace to pursue the call. Right? Isaiah 6, right? Isaiah has an encounter. He sees the king. He sees God high and lifted up, the train of his robe filling the temple. Right? Woo! <laughs> and the seraphim come from the altar, bring the coal from the altar. And, and Isaiah gets a revelation of the holiness of God. He says, woe am, he, woe am I, for I am undone, a man of unclean lips. And the coal touches his, touches his lips, and he's completely cleansed, completely purged. And God says, who will go for us? Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? Right? And after Isaiah had been touched with the coal, touched with the fire, he said, here am I, Lord, send me. And he gets the call of the prophet over his life. See, Moses, the same thing. He has this encounter at the burning bush. Right? A fire in the bush. God encounters him in a fire on the mountain of God. And in the midst, from the midst of the fire, God deals with his fear, right? His fear to speak, his fear to go back to the land that, you know, well, back to Egypt and back to the place where, you know, he, there was murder and all that stuff, right? And yet God deals with his fear and calls him out as a leader of a nation. Out of the midst of the fire. See, some people are so afraid to, to, to get rid of their old rags and to embrace the fire of God, and they have no idea what they're actually missing by holding on to their comfort. God has so much greater for you. He has so much greater for you. But you see, sometimes we've got to, we've got to lay down on the altar in order to receive the greater. In order to receive the greater. And so, the altar of God, where I was going to (laughs) start. 
in 1 Kings, in 1 Kings 18, you have Elijah, and who? And he tells these prophets of Baal, you know, the 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of Asherah, and he's, he goes to them and says, the God who answers by fire, he is God. And so, you know, he gives them their opportunity to uh, prepare their sacrifice, to prepare, you know, their, their altar. And nothing happens, and he mocks them, and he says, perhaps your God's asleep, or whatever, you know, <laughs> needs to be awakened. Yes, he's dead, not real. And uh, Elijah then says, come near to me, in verse 30. And all the people come near to him, and he repairs the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. See, this is what God is doing. Number one, it has to start in our hearts. And then it can happen outside. Because God wants to restore the altar of the Lord in our midst. He wants to restore the altar of the Lord in our nation. So that a true awakening can really spread. That Like wildfire. We're so grateful to where the fire and glory is spreading. How it spread to Ottawa. How it's in London. I'm going to London on Monday again to keep fanning that flame. But I mean, they're seeing radical signs, wonders, miracles, salvations. Uh, you know, just the glory of God. But I believe God wants to light an entire generation on fire and awaken an entire generation. Amen? But listen, we've got to, it's got to start in us first, repairing the altar of the Lord. What is the altar of the Lord? It's the place of sacrifice. How many know that, that, that we are to be a living sacrifice before the Lord? Yeah. Our life should be one that's yielded to Holy Spirit 100%. Yeah. That's what it looks like to live a sacrificial life before the Lord, is to be 100% yielded. I, you know... I, I don't have to say, I don't have to say all that I've sacrificed, but you know, many of us that are walking with the Lord, we've paid a price in order to see what we're seeing. And it's not just a one time thing. Listen, you know, almost, I mean, maybe not daily, but, but very consistently, the Lord is asking me to lay down my own rights for something he wants me to do all the time. And I'm like, God, but this, I, I want to do this. This is an open door over here. Yeah, but I want you to do this one. See, regularly, consistently, God is testing our hearts, you guys. And so often, we want to live in that comfort zone of our own, oh, I wish, I want, this is what I want to do. It's a I, me, myself, and I kind of world, you know? <laughs> Me, myself, and I kind of world. And we don't, that's not what God's looking for, a sacrificial life. He's looking for a life that is 100% yielded to him. Because when you're 100% yielded to him, it's not a hard thing, you guys. Yes, it requires, you know, saying no to your flesh sometimes and dying to your flesh sometimes. But the reward is so much greater. The reward is so much, so much greater. And so the altar of the Lord, it's living, it's literally dying to herself, but it's living, it's living in intimacy. It's living a yielded life. And so in the natural here, Elijah restores the altar, repairs the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Some of us just need to repair the altar in our hearts tonight. The altar of worship, the altar of incense, the altar that is radical, radically in love. Because some of us have grown cold. And God wants to restore and he wants to repair that. He wants to light the fire again. That he could, he could release the glory just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The wall of fire, the glory. This, the, this man, this fourth man that looked like the son of God. Manifest in their, the glory manifests in their midst. See, God wants to manifest the glory in your midst, but you've got to embrace the fire first. And so Elijah restores, repairs the altar, and then we know what happens. He, he fills four pitchers of water, pours it, uh, pours it, you know, several times, three times there. And, and as it's drenched, literally, 
drenched in water. Remember my dream that I had about my family? <laughs> building, building a bonfire on wet soil. And in my dream, I knew that that was an impossible situation. But God said, don't despise the day of small beginnings because I'll, I'll fan the flame. And so Elijah, this happens with him. He, but he soaks it he, in, in water. And then at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and says, and begins to pray. And he says, I've done all these things at your word. Verse 36, answer me, O Lord, answer me that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their heart back again. God wants to restore the altar of your heart that you would be that sign and wonder that people would look at you and say, I want what they have I want what they have I want that light there's something about that person there's a light on that person that I need see this is what happens here in, in the natural and he, he prays that they would have their hearts turned back and then the fire of the Lord verse 38 fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench and when all the people saw it, verse 39, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. All the people, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. It brought a nation back to the Lord, you guys. It brought a nation back to the Lord and then from that place, then the rains begin to come. Come on. See, God wants to repair the altar of our heart and light it so radically on fire with his consuming fire that we would become a sign and wonder that would call a nation, that would call nations, that would call a generation, that would call families, that would call cities back to God, back to his heart, back to who he is. He wants to make you such a fiery torch in his hand. Woo! Such a fiery torch. Everything in this Bible is fire, fire, fire. God is fire. In Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel has an encounter with the firestorm. And he sees, he sees God with, with fire. <laughs> From his waist up, fire. And he gets a revelation of the glory of God going then on into Ezekiel 2. And, and God be, continues to encounter him. But it's fire. In the midst of the fire is the glory of God. And is the revelation of the glory of God. All through this Bible, all through the word. God is fire. He's an all-consuming fire. Revelation 1, fire in his eyes. Like Steve was singing before, Hebrews 1, 7 says, He makes his angels winds, his ministers flames of fire. He's looking for the hot burning ones. I want you to look at Revelation 3, the church of Laodicea. He, he, <laughs> the word of the Lord comes and... And in verse 15, it says, I know your deeds, that you're neither hot nor cold, cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot uh, because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold. I'll spit you out of my mouth. Yikes. <laughs> this is sounding intense, you guys. I'm not trying to make it sound intense. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm telling you, the fire of God is so good. It's so good. The fire of God is love to you. It's, it's, it's judgment to the enemy. It, the fire of God rebukes the devourer. A fire goes round about him, goes round, it's round about him and burns up his adversaries round about. I'm telling you, God wants to rebuke the devourer in your life, whether it be sickness or poverty, lack, whatever it is problems with family he wants to rebuke the devourer when you're encased in the fire of god 
You become invincible to the enemy. I had a dream in that season where I saw myself in the dream and I saw myself just like I am. But then suddenly I was encased in this, in this pillar of fire. And as I watched myself be encased in fire, I could no longer see my human form. All I could see was this pillar of fire. And then as I watched this pillar of fire move, I, it suddenly became completely invisible and I couldn't see anything anymore. But I knew it was there. And I wake up out of that dream with the Lord telling me, he said, Miranda, when you're encased in the fire of God, you become invincible to the enemy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's that very scripture. Psalm 97, three, a fire goes before him, burns up his adversaries round about. Yeah. Let God arise, Psalm 68, one, and his enemies be scattered. Yeah. When you understand who's in you, the God the God of fire inside you. You begin to let him arise inside of you and he begins to cause the enemies of God in your life and around you begin to scatter, begin to be burned up, begin to be devoured, sickness gone. I was preaching on the fire one time in the darkest, what, what we were told at least was the darkest city in Australia. And we're in this place that preachers don't want to go and nobody really goes through there. But, but they, they asked us to come. And so we said, yeah, let's do it. So we do this weekend thing there. And, and on the Sunday morning, I preach on the fire of God. Well, I didn't realize, but uh, the, the church evangelist was cringing in her front seat because she knew who was in the room. And I guess there was, there was a man there and his girlfriend who they'd been trying to witness to this guy for a long time. He was hard. He was the worst drug lord, drug dealer, worst bully in the land. And he never stepped foot in church. And so they tried to get him to come to church. He never would. They hadn't even invited him that morning, but something drew him in. We heard the story later. Something drew him in. So, so here the church evangelist is hearing me preach on the fire of God. And she's kind of cringing. She's like, oh, I'm sure this guy's not like this message. No, actually it was the opposite. <laughs> I'm telling you, that guy had a massive, ba a massive body brace, upper body brace on. He was sitting at the very back. I, I just heard the story after he came up to me to tell me, but, but in the midst of the message, miracles break out. And this man with his girlfriend sitting beside him begins to feel the Holy Spirit on him. <laughs> And suddenly he realized he had, a, he had a debilitating back condition where he literally could not, like, move at all. He had this upper body brace, like I said, and he could not, like, very, he couldn't move. So oftentimes when his girlfriend would want him to reach to get something, he could not because he was in excruciating pain. And suddenly he feels something touch him in the midst of the service. And, and he starts moving around, and his girlfriend says, take it off, take the brace off. So he's like, yeah, it's like the pain, it, it feels like it's gone. He takes it off. He starts moving all around the back of the room, gets touched by the fire of God, goes on to say, this is the best, this is the best preaching I've ever heard. Probably the only time. <laughs> and, but he was so rocked by the fire of God that his life gets transformed. Two of the worst, the, the two worst thieves in the region known, known for theft, known for crime that they came in and the pastors knew who they were and they'd stolen from them before so they were kind of on the guard you know no actually the fire of God caused them to get saved they got saved that day you guys they turned to Jesus <laughs> see sometimes we talk about the fire of God and people people are like oh you know but no the fire of God is love it's love but it will not let darkness stand how many know light pierces into darkness Fire is light. It pierces into darkness and it burns up darkness roundabout. God wants to so light you on fire. Light you on fire that you go blazing, trail blazing into the darkest of the dark places, lighting them ablaze, lighting them on fire. Being signs and wonders. I've gone into some dark places, you guys. Unafraid because I know that I know who's with me. I know who's with me. And when God sends you, God goes with you. <laughs> you better only go where God tells you to go. Don't go before him or don't go, you know, uh, where he's not telling you to go. 
Sometimes we go out of pure zeal, but if God's not asking you to go or if he's not, doesn't give you permission to go, then you better watch it. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's the go of the gospel. We go, right? But I'm telling you, he'll redirect us. But if you're not listening to the still small voice of the Lord and you're not listening to his wooing and his leading, then I'm telling you, you better, you better watch it. <laughs> But listen, a fire goes before him, burns up his adversaries around about. God wants to burn up sickness and disease. He wants to burn up everything, witchcraft, sorcery. He wants to burn up things that stand in the way of him awakening an entire generation. The fire on the day of Pentecost that came, those tongues of fire caused 3,000 to get saved. And that was only the beginning. That was only the beginning. Woo! <laughs> what can happen if this entire room gets those tongues of fire on you? If you get fire on you, <laughs> what can happen? You know, the, the place where the revival in, in uh, London's broken out, we were there uh, almost, well, a year and a half maybe ago or something like that, just before the fire and glory outpouring in San Diego broke out about a month and a half before, two months before. And we were there and we tasted of that spirit of revival in that place. It was crazy. The kids, 12 and under, no joke, getting, getting lit on fire. Like they never experienced, most of them had never experienced Holy Spirit before. Most of them had never prophesied before, never spoken in ten, tongues before. God sovereignly came and released revival fire on them. They began, kids from, from four years old, maybe six years old to 12 years old, start prophesying over each other, start seeing angels, start having, singing the same angelic songs, literally, and singing the same prophetic songs, singing Jesus, literally, I'm telling you, it was such a radical visitation of the Lord. And uh, that was, that sparked something. That sparked something. But here, uh, a year and more, just over a year and a half later, revival breaks out. And now we're almost two months in. And I'm telling you, it's, go it's going to the streets. It's going to the highways and the byways. People are coming from all over the UK and uh, getting saved, getting healed. I'm telling you, you can't even, uh, I was driving in a taxi to the airport the last time I was there and all I was doing was just sitting in the car with this guy and he starts asking me questions and boom lo and behold he ends up giving his heart to Jesus going to the church now I find out uh, Jeremy was there shortly after me again and he says he says Miranda now that guy that, that drove you in the cab he's in the church his mother is serving in the church come on there's such a hunger and a, and a desperation and a an, uh, receptivity in that nation now that they're literally asking for it. Yeah. But you see, it starts with a few sparked with fire. Yeah. It starts with a few. Yeah. My family now is lit on fire. They thought I was crazy 10 years ago. They thought I was so crazy, I had to stop telling them God testimonies because even though they loved Jesus, they, my testimonies were too wild for them. <laughs> now they're the ones going and telling their friends about revival, going and telling their relatives about revival. My mom manifesting gold and silver and oil on her hands as she talks about revival. <laughs> my dad, two gold fillings in his teeth now. Signs and wonders. <laughs> They're so on fire, there's no stopping them. But they used to think I was crazy. <laughs> but you see, God wants to so mark you with fire that, that you see transformation begin to take place everywhere you go. That it begins to light your family, light your, your neighborhoods, light your places of work and influence on fire. But do you know what set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego apart? Do you know what set Daniel apart? Even though he wasn't part of that, that fire story with Nebuchadnezzar, he was a sign and a wonder too. The thing that set them apart was they didn't compromise. They set in their hearts they would not compromise. Daniel 1.8 says Daniel purposed in his heart he would not defile himself with the king's choice delicacies. He would not defile himself. That's an uncompromising mindset. See, I can go into the modeling world and not be pulled into it, not be pulled down into it because I've set in my heart what I will and won't do. And I've set in my heart my standard before the Lord. 
And as a result, I'm not afraid to tell designers, I'm sorry, I can't wear that. And I do. I've said multiple times, I'm sorry, I can't wear that. Can I wear something different? Sometimes they're really, really cool, and they're like, absolutely, and sometimes they fight me on it, but I, I hold my ground. And God gives me favor because I'm telling you, when you're obedient to the Lord and you don't bow down to the idols of the day and you don't bow down to the spirit of this age, I'm telling you, God can back you up. God is so much greater than the spirit of this age, you guys. He wants, he wants to so mark you with fire that you become that uncompromising, unwavering, glory-filled believer, child of God. That releases the glory everywhere you go. Because I refuse to come. And listen, I'm not perfect. I know that. <laughs> but I'm living on the altar. I live in a place of my heart where I'm always checking my heart before the Lord. I'm always coming back to him. I'm always getting myself right with him. But I have purposed in my heart not to intentionally defile myself. Like Daniel. I purpose in my heart to live a lifestyle of purity and no compromise. I'm telling there's too much stuff in the church that in the church, you guys, that's complete outright sin and bondage. And we call it grace. It's not grace at all. Grace is the empowerment, the supernatural enablement to overcome, to do what you're unable to do on your own except by God. That's what real grace is. Grace isn't licentiousness. Grace isn't the legality to sin. No, grace is the supernatural empowerment to be an overcomer. To be an overcomer. I didn't even finish reading Revelation 3, but that's okay. <laughs> but you know what it says, right? Come, buy gold refined in the fire. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Buy it from me gold refined by the fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And I said, to, I didn't even think about this. Remember I said at the very beginning, the eagle, that I, the vision that I had, the eagle and the smoke, the eyesight comes through the smoke of his glory, which comes through the consuming fire. Exodus 24, you can read it. But Moses goes up on the mountain. He enters the cloud of glory. The children of Israel at the base of the mountain see the glory. See God like the, all, the consuming fire on the mountain. But right here, buy from me gold refined by the fire. And I salve goes on, it goes on to say, to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Right? And to he who overcomes, verse 21, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne. Uh, authority, amen, yes. comes from living in the fire of God. Yes. Woo! It comes because he can trust you. Yes. When he can trust you because your altar of worship is right is restored you're living in the place of intimacy you're living in the place of restored covenant you're living in a place of purity it's not it, listen we don't live we live by faith amen but and we live we live by the grace of god it's when you have a close, intimate relationship with God, when your altar of incense, your altar of worship, your altar uh, before the Lord of covenant is restored, listen, it's so easy out of pure love, out of pure love to say yes to him and no to the world. Listen, God wants to cut every ounce of worldliness off of us. He wants to cut it fully off of us that we would not buy into the lust of the flesh, you guys. That we would not buy into the lust of the flesh. He wants you to be in light. He wants you, you to be light in dark places, but you cannot be that if you buy into the lust of the flesh. Be really easy for me being in the fashion industry in the modeling world to give into the lust of the flesh, but that's never why I went in it in the first place. I went into it because God called me into it. But see, 
Where God wants to so set you ablaze that there's nothing on earth that would pull you out of his glory. He wants to so set you ablaze that there's no form of, there's nothing of darkness, no place of darkness that would have its hold on you. But where you would be so radical that you would be the sign and wonder that would cause that place of darkness to be flipped upside down. To be totally flipped upside down. (laughs) Flip it, God. Flip it. (laughs) Oh, I'm telling you, God wants to anoint you. I want you to stand on your feet. I could could preach on this all day. Listen. But... (laughs) Uh, God wants to give you a fresh torch today, you guys. And he wants, to be, he wants it to be burning and blazing on the inside of you. I saw that torch literally moving in like a figure eight. And to me, it represented infinity. It represented covenant. Eternity. Covenant. That fire restores covenant. It restores righteousness. It restores intimacy. Oh, he wants to release that in this place. He wants to release it in your life that that burning torch would be so a part of you. That you would be untouchable to the enemy. Untouchable, untouched by the enemy. No matter what comes your way, no matter what comes your way, no matter what trial, no matter what storm, no matter what, you know, pressure from peers, temptation. But it does not touch you because you're so blazing hot with the fire of God. So blazing hot. And when you're so blazing hot, you begin to emanate the glory. You begin to cultivate the atmosphere around you. That glory atmosphere that pushes back darkness. That pushes back darkness. I've been in places in the modeling world where it's cussing, 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 cussing. And all I do is begin to emanate the glory by changing the atmosphere, by testifying of Jesus. And boom, all that cussing stops. Those producers, those cameramen, they suddenly stop cussing because boom, I've changed the atmosphere just in my presence. By carrying the torch. God wants to so fill you with a torch of fire. He wants to so mark you with a torch of fire. That you will cultivate the atmosphere with glory all around. He wants to so mark you with fire that you see miracles everywhere you go. I was preaching on the fire one time in Montreal, Canada. There was a man watching on the live stream. 200 cysts, growths on his body. He was afraid to leave his house because of the shame of it, the embarrassment of it. Preach on the fire, release the fire of God, suddenly totally healed every single cyst left his body. Our good friend Samuel Robinson continues to remind me of it because he became, that man became a sign and a wonder in that region. He became a sign and a wonder in that region because he came out of his house free from every growth, every cyst on his body. All because of the fire of God. The fire of God touched a man in in Austria one time, uh, addicted to heroin. He came up to me, asked me uh, for prayer, said, I want to be free from drugs. and I want to be free from heroin. I I do heroin every single day. I want to be free from it. Pray for him. The fire of God touches him. Jeremy, my husband, goes back a year later, and this man comes running up to Jeremy with his pastors and says, your wife prayed for me a year ago. I've been free ever since I haven't touched drugs. I haven't touched heroin. I haven't touched any addiction since. The fire of God is, releases the grace, the empowerment to be free from worldliness, to be free from addiction, to be free from bondage. To be free from every chain that holds us. The fire of God touched a man in Ottawa, Toronto, Canada one time. Releasing the fire there. People.
people smelt the fragrance of the smoke. This man ends up getting uh, asking to be free from uh, cigarette smoking. And he was addicted. And pray for him. He goes out, forgets that I even pray because the addiction goes to light up. And comes running back in and says, Miranda, I just realized I tried to go smoke because I didn't even, you know, it just habit. But I couldn't even get the cigarette to my mouth. I'm free, he says. This is what the fire of God does, you guys. The fire of God burns out everything that cannot stand in the glory of God. If you want this tonight, I want you to come out of your seats and I want you to, I want you to come back to the fire of God tonight. I want to give you an invitation. Lift your hands to the Lord or get on your face, whatever, whatever you need to do. I love the altar of the Lord. Jeremy and I say this all the time to the people in, in San Diego. You know, it's not, coming to the altar is not a hype thing. Coming to the altar is a place of your heart that God loves. When we step out and show him, we're coming to meet him. There's something that happens where God touches you because he looks for response. Amen. You guys are responsive tonight. God, I thank you. I thank you that in this place tonight, God, that you would release, that you are releasing that fiery coal, God. I, I had someone, I don't know if it was the Lord or an angel, but come to me in worship. And I had my hands out, cupped open, and dropped into my hand was a fiery coal. And the Lord said, I want you to eat it, Miranda. <laughs> a fiery coal. And I ate it and I felt the fire of God inside me. But it's just like how Isaiah got touched by the, from the altar on his lips. Whew. He got the call of God from that place. He was cleansed, he was purified, and he got the call of God. And I believe there's an invitation in this place tonight to receive that coal, to eat that coal, to take that coal, that it's going to become a torch inside of you. But God, right now in this place, God, we embrace the flame. We embrace the fire, God. We embrace the fire, God. God, I thank you right now, Lord God, that you touch every person in this place, God. Lord, these are hungry ones, God. These are your hungry sons and daughters, God. They want it, God. Lord, right now, God, myself included, Lord, that you would release the flame, God. Lord, hotter than ever before, God. For your glory, God. Lord, that you would light us ablaze, God. That you would purge us. We give you permission tonight to purge us, to refine us, to purify us, God. Yeah. <laughs> light us on fire, God. Yeah, purify God. Remove anything, any obstacle, anything that hinders. If there's anything that comes to mind, you might be all good, but I know there's some people in this place that there's things that God's bringing to mind right now that you need to just. Just in your own way, in your own place, just give it to God. Repent of it. It's as easy as that. Thank Jesus for the blood, right? So if there's anything that comes to mind, just give it to the Lord. Because we got to do that first, and then he can fill us with glory. <laughs> so God, if there's anything, Lord, we give you permission to bring anything up, anything to the surface that you want to remove by your fire. Oh, Jesus, we invite you. We invite the torch of the Lord. We invite the torch of the Lord right now, God. We invite the torch of the Lord, God. 
We invite you, all-consuming fire. God, we invite you, God. Lord, just like Moses went up the mountain and stepped into the consuming fire of your glory, God. We step up and we step in tonight, God. We step up and we step in tonight, God. Whoa. And some of you are going to begin to see from the midst of the fire, you begin to see that I said, God, God, even as you remove the scales from our eyes. Remember, that's what happened with Saul. He saw a flash of light. God turned his life upside down. Saul, who became Paul, or we know as Paul in Acts, Acts chapter 9. You see the flash of light. Boom. He goes from killing God's people to flipped upside down life where he begins he becomes the leading apostle of his day he saw a flash of light and scales came from his eyes God I thank you that you would release you would release that fire in this place tonight God you would release fire God in this place tonight God You would release fire in this place tonight, God. You would release fire, God, in our hearts tonight, God. You would release fire in our hearts tonight, God. Light us a flame, God. Light us a blaze, God. Remove everything that hinders, God. And let us be signs and wonders of your glory, God. Mark us with fire, God. Mark us with fire, God. Some of you are going to begin to feel that fire moving through you. Some of you are going to feel the fire on your feet. Some are going to feel it in your, like in your chest, kind of in, or in your heart. Just embrace the flame right now. Mark them, God. 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 God, I thank you that you break, Lord, any addictions. God, that you break even fear in this place. Uh, The Lord also told me in worship earlier that he's going to set people free even from schizophrenia. I don't know if there's anyone in this place or online dealing with voices, schizophrenia. I'm telling you, God's going to set you free tonight. So that's you, whether you're in this place or you're watching online. Receive that tonight. In Jesus' name, we speak to schizophrenia to be healed, to be gone, gone away with. In Jesus' name, we've seen this over and over and over again. People that hear voices, God just silences them and is done for good. God, we release that right now in Jesus' name. We release that right now in Jesus' name. We speak to every voice that's not God's voice to be silenced in Jesus' name. Every bit of bondage to fear be broken in Jesus' name. Be broken in Jesus' name. Every bit of bondage to fear be broken in Jesus' name. Yes, God, yes, 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 yes. Come on, yes, God. Yes, God. Mark them, 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 God. As fire starters, God. As fire starters, God. As fire starters, God. Yes. God, I thank you for this intercessor, Father. I thank you, God, for the fire in her heart, God. I thank you for the intercession. I'm telling you, you're going to see the intercession in your life amped up even more in this season. Amped up even more. And I also see business. 
business. I see business and intercession. And I see businesses shifting because of your intercession and because of your prayer. Father, I thank you for this prayer warrior, Father. I thank you for increased measures of your fire and glory on her and on her businesses, God. In Jesus' name. Mark him, God. Mark him, God. Even like Samuel at a young age, God. Hearing your voice, God. Hearing your voice, God. Encountering you, Lord. Encountering you, God. In radical ways, God. Seeing miracles, God. Signs and wonders, Father. Signs and wonders, God. Miracles, signs and wonders. And your voice, God. God, I thank you for the visitations, God. The encounters and the visitations, God. Mark her, God. Mark her, God. Oh, Lord, God, release the angels, Father. God, release. Father, I thank you for the missions. God's going to put such a heart of compassion in you. He's going to put such a heart of compassion and mercy and missions in you. The nations, you're called to nations. You're called to missions and nations. God, I thank you that you anoint her feet, God. You anoint her, God, with compassion, God, and mercy, Lord God, and generosity that sees God that sees miracles, Lord, and that brings hope, restores hope to nations. Father, I thank you. Come on, God's, God's marking, he's marking you in this place right now. He's marking you. He's marking you. Just keep, just keep receiving. There's, a, there's an anointing for even arts over you. There's a purity on you, and there's, there's a faith on you, and there's a favor on you. And God's going to open doors for you that no man can shut. He's going to open doors of favor and of influence. And I see, I see two worlds. I see both arts and I see um, athletics. And I feel like God's going to give you a voice, whether you're in, in them or not, I don't know. But I, I see you being a voice to both. And, um, and Father, I just thank you for the creativity that's on her life, God. I thank you that you mark her, God, even as a voice, God. Lord, a voice of truth. Lord, God, that you release that voice of truth through her. And Lord, that I thank you for the faith, God, and I thank you for the purity. And I thank you for that spirit of gentleness upon her, Father. And I thank you, God, Lord, that you would use her, God, even to bring restoration, God. Lord, where I, I see you actually like reuniting people, where there's like division and there's, um, there's uh, you know, like just division. I just see, I see God using you to bring uh, unity and bring reconciliation. Um, you're like a peacemaker. So God, we just call that forth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. God, we just thank you right now, Lord. Yes, God. We just thank you right now, God. We just thank you right now. They ask, shut up, Yes, God. I'm telling you, God's going to... I see God doing deliverance. I see God setting people free tonight. God, I thank you that right now, Lord God, you break chains that bind, Father. That you break chains that bind. That you break chains that bind, God. You break chains that bind, that hold us back or hinder us, God, from destiny, that hinder us, God, from seeing the glory of God. Some of you are just going to feel like just a release. You're going to feel just a freedom come. Yeah. Father, I thank you that you set people free even from depression tonight. God, that you set people free even from depression tonight. Anxiety, fear, worry tonight in Jesus' name. I also saw God healing people from cysts, removing, dissolving cysts. I saw that earlier in the worship. God's removing growths. Even like I testified the man, 200 cysts on his body. That's a lot. 
You may not have 200, but you may have one. But I'm telling you, God's removing those tonight. In Jesus' name, we just rebuke. We just take authority right now over cysts and tumors, over growths in the body that aren't supposed to be there. We just command them to be dissolved right now in Jesus' name. To be burnt right now in Jesus' name. To be dissolved right now in Jesus' name. We just release the fire of God right now. Yes! Shokureyanze. Yes, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you restore eyesight. In the natural, you restore vision. Restore, if you need a miracle in your eyes, just receive that right now. Just take that right now. In Jesus' name, we speak to cataracts to dissolve. We speak to... Eyesight to be restored right now. Someone with an issue in their pancreas. God's healing someone's pancreas right now. Yes, God. We speak to that pancreas in Jesus and be healed right now in Jesus' name. Be made new right now in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Release your glory, God. Release your glory, God. Yes, God. Freedom, God. God, I just speak to injustice right now. God, in people's lives in this place, we speak to injustice. God, we call forth your fire on injustice right now, God. I call forth your fire on injustice right now. God, we speak to injustice. God, we call forth justice to be released, God. On lawsuits, justice to be released, God. God, I speak to every place, God, where people need a miracle. I saw the Lord healing someone. There's a woman, I believe, in here who you haven't been able to have a baby, you're barren, and God, you want to have a baby, I'm telling you, God's going God's gonna to heal you. I just heard the Lord say, I'm healing barrenness. So God, I just speak to that right now, and I just speak healing right now to that condition in Jesus' name. God, I speak to carpal tunnel right now to be healed right now in Jesus' name. Rotator cuff be healed right now. The left side be healed right now in Jesus' name. God, flood this place with your glory, God. Flood this place, God. Every person with your glory, God. With your glory, God. With your glory, God, in your left shoulder, move it around. See how it's feeling. Listen, this is atmospheric, you guys, because the fire of God, the fire of God burns up adversaries. Better? Yeah? Come on. How long did you have that condition? A week and a half, and it's feeling good now. I mean, you got mobility, man. <laughs> you couldn't do that before. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What did you do? With, how did you put it out? Or what happened? 4,000 pounds of stuff, man. Re-injured an old injury, but it's good now. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank, listen, if you need a miracle in your body right now, just lift your hands to the Lord. Just receive it where you're at right now. 
Listen, you don't need someone to lay hands on you. Just receive the fire of God right now. Burns up every sickness. Burns up every sickness. Burns up every disease. Burns up every infirmity. Right now, in Jesus' name, we take authority over sickness and disease. Lung conditions, heart palpitations, knee injuries, bronchial issues. We speak healing right now in Jesus' name. Sinuses be opened up in Jesus' name. We speak to the feet to be healed right now. If you have issues with your feet, just begin to move them around right now. Just begin to stomp on them. Whatever would normally irritate. Lord, we just speak healing right now. Even someone who, who likes to dance, you're a dancer, you like to dance, and you've been having issues with your ankle, God's healing you right now. In Jesus' name, that's you. Receive that right, is that you? Yeah. Oh, your right one? Yeah, that's the one I was feeling as I was giving that word. Just move it around. In Jesus' name, we just, we just command all that pain to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. How's that feeling? Good? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. More, God. Just begin to move your body around. Just begin to move it around. I know sometimes we get, you know, we get in the vein of, oh, we got to have someone lay hands on us and, like, pray for 10 hours over that condition. Listen, that's, you guys. <laughs> The fire of God burns up every sickness. <laughs> you know what God told the, told the Israelites, Old Testament? If you just obey my commands, you, none of those sickness, I'll put none of those sicknesses on you that were in Egypt. None of them. Right? If you just get in the glory, he removes all that stuff. All that stuff. Someone, you're getting healed in your stomach right now. Your stomach lining, even someone needs healing in the stomach lining, God's healing you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. And God, I just even speak, God, I even speak to, wow, any form of trafficking in this region, in this city, God, I thank you that you would expose God, you would expose things in darkness, God. Human trafficking, God. Child pornography, God. I thank you, Lord, that you would expose things in darkness, God. In this, this city, God. In this region, God. Lord, in Washington State, Father. That you would expose things in darkness. We call forth, Lord, your righteousness to prevail, God. Your righteousness, God. Lord, every form of injustice, God. Lord, with trafficking, with child victims, God. Trafficked victims, God. We call forth righteousness and a revealing of those things hidden under the rug. God, we call them into your glorious life. Expose it, God. And Lord, I thank you, God, that you would bring righteousness, Father. God, and you would bring a revelation of Jesus in, the, in Lord, in Seattle region, God, Washington State, Father. I thank you that you, God, would ex begin to expose, God, even... God, where there's been darkness, where there's been witchcraft, Father, that you begin to bring things into your glorious light, Father. God, I thank you that you would begin. God, you would begin, Lord, to reverse every curse over the church, Father, in this region, Father. God, that you would begin to reverse every curse over the church, God, of witchcraft, Lord Jesus. We just, we just bind every exterior voice, God, that would come against revival, that would come against the church, God, that would come against your people, God. And we just say, shut down. In Jesus' name, shut down every weapon formed against the people of God. 
cannot prosper in Jesus name God I thank you that you would begin to expose God Lord God places of witchcraft father in this region God that you God would begin to shut it down you begin to expose you begin to bring forth your righteousness bring forth the revealing of Jesus I'm only declaring this because of what I saw God wanted to do in worship earlier I just, God, we just thank you that you would bring, you would bring a revealing of truth, Jesus, and silence everything that comes against the move of God, and silences everything that comes against the church of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit in this region, in Jesus' name. And God, we just thank you that you encase this place and these people, God, with a wall of fire around them, the glory in their midst, Father. Wall of fire around them, the glory in their midst, God. An encasement, God, of your fire, God. Your wall of fire, God. The glory of God in the midst of your people, Lord. Father, we thank you, God, for a mighty harvest coming forth in this season, Lord. Is there anyone here? I want to give you an opportunity tonight. If there's any, if there's even just one person, you don't know if you're right with God tonight. You don't know if you have a right relationship. Maybe you've gone to church. You've been in the church. You've been coming to these meetings, but you don't know if you've ever actually made a commitment in your heart to the Lord and had a right relationship with God. I want to make sure tonight that you are in right standing with God the Father. That's the eternal, that's the eternal miracle. So if there's anyone, just every eye closed right now, if there's anyone that needs to get right with God, you need to make a first time commitment or a renewal, I want you to just lift your hand before the Lord tonight. Thank you. Just lift your hand before the Lord tonight if there's anybody else. Thank you, Lord. And if there's anybody online, I want to give you this invitation tonight. And let's just all just pray this tonight. Lord Jesus, I just come to you tonight. I just give you my heart afresh. I ask you to come in and fill me up. To wash me clean of my sin. And fill me with your glory and righteousness. Be Lord of my life. Be my friend and my savior. Today I choose you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I would walk with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, just last thing, just I just want you to check your bodies. Just see if you feel like there's a release from the pain or, yeah? What happens? Uh, you had elbow and wrist when you called that out earlier. The elbow condition? Um, it's something that's been happening for the last couple of months. And it's just really irritating. For the last couple of months? I couldn't lift anything like this, and I picked the sign up out front. So. Come on. He said he couldn't lift anything like this, and he went outside to pick the sign up, and there's no pain. Come on, that's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else just wave? At, yeah, what happened over here? So, um, I think it's like a bladder, um, uh, not infection, but um, overreact, overreactive bladder, and I came here for a miracle, and I haven't, I didn't urinate since 6 o'clock. I'm going to be a pulse carrier on Monday, so I was concerned about that. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. That's, that's not normal. That's not normal. Power. Come on, it's at six o'clock. That's four and a half hours. God, we just thank you, Lord. That's never going to be an issue again in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, that you bless our new job in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Anybody? That's awesome. Anybody else get some? Yeah, what happened over here? 
I've been coming to this revival every night this week, and I would suffer with waking up feeling spiritually weary. And I woke up this morning, and I felt the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Anybody else feel get a miracle? Some, yeah, what happened over here? February 29th last year, when I was on active duty, I was injured, and I was in a mobile combat unit in the Middle East, and 10 years ago, it happened in 2005, well, actually more than 10 years now. Last year, I was completely paralyzed from the waist down. As a single mother, it was really hard. I had two back surgeries last year, and I'm walking again, and so the pain was coming back, and the numbness and deadness in my leg. So we're looking at a third surgery, and the pain is starting to go away in my back. <laughs> thank you, Lord. God, I just thank you that all of that pain is going to go away. It's going away and not coming back in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, God, that she is a walking, talking miracle. Father, we bless her, God, for her service, Lord, and we just thank you, God, Lord, that you use her so powerfully for your glory, God. And Lord, that this testimony, God, that she would see many miracles. I'm saying God is putting that anointing on you. Even as you have so much compassion and so much mercy for people, so much care for people, I'm telling you, he's putting a miracle anointing on you to see healings on other people. So God, we just release that and Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you that there's no more numbness, no more pain. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. How are you feeling? Good? Come on. God bless you. You're welcome. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Yeah, what happened over here? This is for March. You prayed with me in Jerusalem for my granddaughter, Lydia. She was having, three years old, having severe bowel problems and kind of a bad report from the doctor. We prayed. When I got home, I talked to my, my daughter-in-law, and she said, while you were gone, there was a day. I knew exactly what to do, took her off the medication, perfectly healed. That's awesome. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else get a miracle tonight? Come on. God is good. Amen. Amen. He's good. I know that there's going to be there's going to be more people over this weekend and even that are going to wake up and you're going to discover, you know, you're different. How many of you felt like a release of something tonight? Like you felt like something lifted, you got just free of things. Come on. God is good. Amen. Amen. Come on. Can we give the Lord just glory tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to give this back to Steve or Darren, <laughs> and I'm excited for what I'm going to release tomorrow, I think, unless the Lord changes it, so we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you so much, Miranda. Thank you. Do you guys just enjoy Miranda Nelson tonight? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, may he bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you. Go straight home and go to bed, unless you're going to Denny's, and we will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for Miranda Nelson, and tomorrow night... Charlie Sham. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Good night. And good night, everyone online. <laughs>